Um, so before we do anything else, we're going to jump over to policies and we're going to create a policy. Let's put that out of the way. All right, so we're going to add a policy. The first policy we create is going to be uh, default deny. Um, and we're going to go to source. Source is going to be any. Uh, destination is going to be any. Application is any. And we're going to change application default to any. And then we're going to come over to our actions tab, choose deny. And then uh, we're going to maintain a log at the end of every session. Click OK. And now we have a uh, default deny. So anything that we want to create, uh, anything that we want to allow through the network needs to be above this rule. Uh, anything that's not explicitly explicitly allowed will have to uh, will be denied based on this pol this rule here. Now the policy now the firewall does have a default deny policy. Um, but I, I always, um, best practice for me is to explicitly deny all traffic. Um, so before we commit, we're going to want to create another rule. And what we'll do with this rule is call it um, Palo Alto uh, Network Services. And what we'll do with this is um, from the management network, from the management device or the management uh, interface of the firewall, we'll allow that out to the internet so that we can um uh, so that we can you know grab our licenses and uh update uh when necessary uh so this is not going to be a universal it's going to be interzone rule and we'll put this from the management network um to uh from our firewall and what we'll do is we'll create an address for this fw1 that secnetwork.org with our MP of 10.0.11.21. And then we'll let that, um, no user stuff. Um, so from source to destination is gonna be WAN. Uh, no destination address, cause uh, we don't have one. Uh, application is going to be um, Palo, I'll tell and from here what we want is uh, Palo Alto updates and then we want Palo Alto wildfire cloud and then Palo Alto, Palo Alto. actually no I don't think we do want the cloud so then we want Palo Alto um, It is a cloud. All right, so we do want the pod. Sorry. Um uh, and uh, can't see that. Uh, so then we want PandDB Cloud. And we will need SSL. Web browsing. DNS. Actually, what we'll do for DNS is we'll create another rule for DNS. Um, <clears throat> so we have these. Uh, we're only going to allow application defaults. Uh, we're going to allow this action. And then what we'll do is we'll move this rule to the top. And then below that rule, we'll create a rule for temp um, DNS and NTP, and TP, uh, and this will also be a uh, inter zone. And what we'll do is from management and from our firewall, from of uh, two, sorry, when, and then we'll put 
and eta eta product four. And if I'm not mistaken, we can create. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to create a uh, FQDN for zero dot pool dot NTP dot org. And we'll copy that over there. And we should be able to also create one for one. Which I'll also copy over to FQDN like such. And so this should allow us to hit any uh, IP address in those uh, names. Uh, applications are going to be DNS. And what I would do normally, uh, if this wasn't going to be a temporary rule, is um, I would split them into two different rules, one for time uh, and one for DNS. But since this is going to be temporary, we're going to leave it as one quick rule and then there we go. All right, so those are our, our few rules we're gonna create. And there is one thing we still need to do, and let's go into our do virtual router default, and then we'll click on this, and then we'll create a defaults, default uh, route. So this is gonna be default gateway. Uh, zero, zero, zero is that zero slash zero. And then we'll do, uh, we can do an interface. We don't have to. Uh, we're going to do IP address. And then it's going to be 6231240.1. And then we'll click OK. And that's it. Click OK. And then we will commit. And we'll watch the commits. All right, so it looks like our commit is um, nearly done. Um, so I've noticed that I've seen this um, error um, come up a few times. Uh, I think this is a bug because um, I know our default gateway is right and I know it's within our subnet. Um, so uh, we'll ignore that and come back to it if we have a problem. Uh, so we'll try to... Um, so we'll go and retrieve our licenses from the license server and verify that we really do have internet, which we don't because we have to do one quick thing. We have to uh, connect our interfaces. All right, so this is gonna fail, uh, but we'll still connect our interfaces and I wish I can jump over to the interface tab. Uh, and so before we um, before we do that, what we'll do is we'll jump over here, uh, let's log back into our switch. Uh, then we will jump into switch, copy that password from Bidwarden, and um, we'll do this. So first let's do show interface status. And what we'll see is uh, interface five is connected. Uh, so what we'll do it now is connect the uplinks. Uh, so we'll do, we'll quit out of that. So here's one. Two. Three. And four. So now if we run this command again, uh, all of our interfaces are up 
And what we should do is show ether channel summary and our port channel is up. All right, so we can get out of that and jump back over to our switch. Now it failed, so before we jump, try to refresh, we'll jump over here. Uh, and yep, one through four is up and our aggregate is up and active. So we're good on both sides. Uh, so we'll go into devices and we'll try refreshing. But interesting enough, so let's look at our policy. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one thing we forgot to do. Uh, we forgot to create a net rule. All right, so we're gonna create a net rule for the same thing, PA uh, network services. Uh, it's always something. All right, so from zone is gonna be management. Destination zone is going to be WAN. Um, and we're going to do uh, destination interface is going to be eight. Uh, we're going to do any service. Source is going to be our firewall. And our destination is going to be any. And then we're going to do a, a dynamic IP to ports. And then we're going to do interfaces, um, each, and our NAT IP. All right, so we're going to click OK, commit that. Can't believe we forgot our net rule. So while we're waiting for that, let's jump back over to security. So well, actually, before we do that, um, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, if we don't want, um, if we want to use the management interface uh, strictly for management and not for uh, allowing traffic out, most uh, management networks do not get internet access of any kind. Uh, the, other, the only other way that I know to allow um, the Palo Alto to update across the internet directly without you know downloading uh, directly from Palo Alto and uploading uh, into the firewall. Uh, what we could do is we can go to device, setup, uh, interfaces. Uh, actually, no, 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 sorry. Uh, what we can do is, ah, okay. So we would come to services, uh, service route. And right now everything is being routed from the management interface, but you can customize this. So going out to Palo Alto, you can actually specify, um, you know, the WAN interface, for example, and have the traffic come out straight from the WAN. And um, that way you bypass it. I don't like doing that. Um, I, I'd rather have the traffic come straight through the Palo Alto instead of um, going straight from it. Uh, I feel like I have better control over what's going through it. Uh, but from a security standpoint, a lot of it's going to be de determined by risk and whether or not um, you guys are, or, or anybody is going to want to allow uh, an extra risk from the management network. So as we can see, uh, we're able to now get our licenses in.